This is our 11 through 25. We don't go team by team here, but we do want to kind of give some explanations for some of this stuff and, and talk about some of the stuff that's, you know, fresh on our mind. We, we got to welcome in a couple of teams into the top 25, first of all, making their very first appearance into the top 25 here on first and long. Uh, Washington State and Memphis, each team with a loss apiece coming in there at 24 and 25. Um, look, I mean, uh, Memphis and the AAC, they, they're kind of a, Got a kind of a, I guess, a secondary shot at maybe winning that conference. Uh, watch out. Washington State's going to win the pack, too. Uh, I, I don't know, you know, what really comes of that or, or you know, go, go look at Washington State's schedule. I mean, it's, it's just not, you know, not very good. Uh, Memphis had played Navy earlier this year, played them pretty tight, I guess, but, but wasn't able to come out on top on that one. So um, a couple of decent teams there. We're, we're kind of at a point where we have to throw a couple of them there at the bottom. So um, Washington State, Memphis, uh, you, you, you get your uh, 20 seconds of fame here on the first and long college football show. Illinois drops down to 23rd. Um, you know, uh, Illinois ha has only got a couple of losses this season, you know, at this point, and they're to Penn State and Oregon. So whereas I do got two losses, they, they still deserve to be in the top 25 with the fact that, I mean, those are some of the best losses that you can get, right? Um, we've got Colorado creeping up to 22. I think we had them around 25 last week. This is as surprising to me as it is to maybe you, I guess, but uh, it's very surprising to me. If you would have told me, you know, 10 weeks ago that we were going to have Colorado in our week 10 top 25, I would have called you crazy. I mean, I would just flat out would have called you crazy uh, probably right here on air. Um, 21, Alabama. Alabama absolutely thumps Missouri this week. Uh, we don't have to really go into that. We know why Alabama's where they're at. SMU, watch out for SMU, guys. Now, SMU turns the ball over a billion times this week. They 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 still figure out a way to win, and SMU's got some big games in front of them where they're going to be able to make a name for themselves. And I'm just going to tell you, nobody wants it more than SMU. I mean, so uh, they go into some of these matchups as, as underdogs here at the end of the season. Nobody wants it more than this program. They, this is a program that came into the ACC and deferred all payments and money for multiple years to be able to join that conference. This is a, somebody. This is they're hungry, man. They're absolutely hungry, and they've got a big game coming up this week. Pitt at SMU. That's going to be a big one, considering the fact that Pitt over there ranked at number fifteen. I'll go ahead and knock them out while we're talking about them. Um, Mason, you know. Poked holes all in the Pitt Panthers last night. If you watched the show with us last night, just poking holes all in my Pitt Panthers. Could not believe it. Um, we're we're going to talk more about those Pitt Panthers and and uh, the schedule that they've played or or lack thereof, however you want to look at it. But Pitt has navigated their way to an undefeated season so far. That's really good for Pitt. Again, we talked about it week after week. Now we're separating good stories from good football teams. I'm not so sure that Pitt, while I still, I do think Pitt is a decent football team. I don't think they're horrible, but they're, they're, they're probably in all reality, you know, shouldn't be any higher than, um, you know, 20 as far as in the country. But this is where we're at in the season. I mean, they're undefeated and they deserve to be at 15 at this point. But in all reality, I think they're maybe a, more of a top 20 to top 25-ish team. Um, but we, you, you got to tip your cap when you win all your ball games. Army, 19, we've talked about Army. Eventually, we're going to have a game to talk about here on the show, but uh, again, we don't. <coughs> Ole Miss at 18. LSU sinks to 17 after the loss to Texas A&M. I bumped Kansas State down some after struggling with Kansas. I know it was a rivalry game. Kansas State just shows us over and over again that, that they are very beatable. I, I, I like Kansas State in the Big 12, but my God, I mean, they, they – they can be beat, and they can be be beat multiple different ways. Um, and Kansas almost did it this week, a team that's won two games this year. So I don't know. I'm a little weary about Tech, or excuse me, Kansas State at this point. Boise State, we slide them up to 14. They did their thing against UNLV this week. They absolutely deserve it. Only loss they've got is to Oregon, and that is the best kind of loss you can have in the country as they are, uh, spoiler, spoiler alert, still number one. Uh, Notre Dame at 13 again. I told y'all I ain't moving Notre Dame until I got a real good reason to. And they're going to stay right there at 13 um, until further notice. 
tw- uh, Texas at 12. Um, Texas kind of proved me right last week, guys. I, I Look, I'm not going to lie. Last week, I was a little bit, uh, I, I had a little bit of the redneck red ass, if you will. Uh, I don't know if you've heard those, I ever heard of that type of terminology, but uh, it's where you, the red ass is where you get a little upset, maybe with a team or a fan base. And, and maybe I was upset a little bit with both last week. But a lot of what I said about the offense, about this team, I really did mean it. And I think that Texas has got some issues, man. Um, I, I don't think that they're the team that everybody thought they were three weeks ago. Um, are they a bad team? No, they're not a bad team. Uh, but I think they're more of a defensive-led football team than they are offensively at this point. And that's weird to say from a Steve Sarkeesian group. Tennessee at number 11. Uh, Tennessee's going to be facing off of Kentucky this week. We're going to talk about that game today. Um, and so I'm going to save a little bit of my Tennessee talk. But we've got Tennessee at 11. Really, really good defense. I'm interested to see if Tennessee can work a little bit more on the passing game this week. Um, we, we know what the run game is. It's one of the best in the country. Um, and that's bad news for Kentucky as we're going into that breakdown shortly. What are your thoughts, 11 through 25, Mason? Um, I like the group. Um, not a whole lot of shaking up at this point in the season. You know, there's uh, w- with last week, there just weren't a ton of upsets. Um, you do have LSU dropping down. I mean, that was a big game. That was uh, that game could have gone either way, really. A lot of mistakes late in the, in that second half, uh, particularly by Garrett Nussmeyer. But um, but yeah. don't count LSU out just yet. I mean, they're a one loss SEC team or, or one loss in the SEC at this point. Uh, they could definitely climb back in this thing. A lot's got to go their way. They're going to need some some uh, teams to lose. Uh, for them to have a path to the SEC championship game. But um, looking pretty good right now, I think, for the Tigers. Just probably probably got caught up in a, a tough part of their schedule where, where yep. they had three emotional games back-to-back-to-back. To back to back. Um, this week they're going to have a bye before going on to play Alabama. Um, that's, that game's going to be at home, by the way, a huge game for the Tigers and for the Tide, um, as that one could uh, shape to be uh shape up to be uh, a, a really a, a phenomenal game when you look at it but we'll, we'll talk about that again next week um as both teams are going to be on a bye uh i thought alabama speaking of them they handle business against missouri you, you really can't ask for much more I, I i do think that alabama's offense is a little bit tough to watch right now but the defense just came out and absolutely um you know, did what they were supposed to do. I mean, Missouri couldn't score a single point. Uh, you can't ask for much more out of your defense if you're the Tide. Um, Colorado, once again, not just winning but covering. I mean, that they've looked really good the past few weeks and and figure to be uh, a Big 12 championship contender now, which is something that I did not have on my bingo card going into the season. But um, they they continue to prove me wrong and and can. And, and to prove a lot of people in America wrong. So you gotta you gotta tip your cap to the to the buffs there um and what they've been able to do, not just in the transfer portal going into the season, but as they have continued to develop in particular on the defensive side of the football and up front on that defense, it's been really, really uh pretty impressive. Pretty impressive to see there. Um let's see, Notre Dame, big win over over Navy, I would say. Um, it's tough with, with as easy of a schedule as Notre Dame plays to find those big wins. We're going to see in a couple of weeks when they play army, uh, kind of if they can replicate, uh, that sort of dominance over a service Academy team that, uh, is much better than in years past. But, um, I, I think that they're, they're kind of shaping up to be a team that actually does end up making the playoffs if they can continue to win. And I, I think at this point, Notre Dame's got to win out after that early loss to NIU that, uh, seems to get further and further away from our memory, but um, and then uh, last team I'll talk about is Boise Boise State, uh, really big win over UNLV. That was that was a uh, a tough win for them, going to UNLV and 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 playing that team. I thought their defense stepped up uh, and, and really played well in key moments, um, and that was the difference in the football game, in my opinion. Uh, you know, Ashton Genty pretty much got held in check had had less than 150 yards which is uh is pretty incredible actually uh going up against him i think he's probably the best running back in the country um but yeah i I like 11 through 25 let's get in the top 10 let's do it 
Texas A&M, I slid them up to number 10 this week. Um, that was a big win, obviously, this past week at, uh, or, or excuse me, not at LSU, but hosting LSU. Um, wow. Marcel Reed comes in in the second half of that football game and really just changed, changed the whole complexion of the game. I mean, that, that, I don't know really any other way to put it. We're going to talk some Texas A&M football today. They're going to be going on the road to williams Bryce Stadium facing off against South Carolina. And I'm, I'm really interested to see how this team responds to so much positivity over the last few weeks. It's been an emotional last few weeks for Texas A&M as they absolutely thump Missouri at home. You get LSU at home, and I, I guess you could really kind of call that a thumping uh, right there at the end of that football game. Um, that second half made the comeback there. Texas A&M has got some momentum. Uh, I'm really interested to see, again, how this team handles the emotional victory last week. I mean, I, this is – I'm sure it's the, – the, the energy is high as hell there at, at Kyle Field and, and at Texas A&M. How do you handle that now that you got to go on the road? We'll see. Number nine, Ohio State. Color me unimpressed with what I saw yes, uh, this Saturday with Ohio State against Nebraska. This offensive line for Ohio State has got issues, just like we talked about in the preseason. Um, you know, I was joking around with Mason yesterday. I said, you remember uh, way back at the beginning of the season when Ohio State told us that we were crazy because we had questions about this offensive line and they're the best offensive line in the country, hands down? That was not true then. It never was. And it sure as hell ain't true now. Um, now that – and Ohio State's got guys hurt at this point. So – there's questions to be answered as they're gearing up for a really big game in Happy Valley this weekend. So um, we're, we're going to have to really – that's a game we're going to talk about on Tuesday, not today. We'll talk about that one on Tuesday. So come back and hang out with us, and we'll have more on that game and, and the health of these two teams. Obviously, there's some health concerns for Penn State as well. Um, Penn State we'll talk about here in a minute. Iowa State, again, this is not a team that I'm overly impressed with, Mason. I think I actually bumped them down a little bit from the week before. And it had more to do with people that I wanted to move up ahead of them and not so much to do with Iowa State. But, um, you know, just looking back at their body of work this year, it's just not really all that impressive, I'll just be honest with you. I mean, they're undefeated. That's the most impressive part. And that's, you know, the part that matters at this point. But as the schedule heats up here for Iowa State, I certainly expect them to uh, falter at some point. Number seven, Clemson. This team has been on the rise pretty much all year after they took their beat down in week one against Georgia. Um, if there's one thing to, to kind of pick out with Clemson, I don't know that their defense is super deep. Go back and look at some of the totals they've given up this year, over 30 points in multiple games, um, some in which were team to teams that don't have a very good offense. Um, I'm about to beat my dog's ass over there lapping water like a horse. Um, sorry if y'all hear that. but we, we Number six. It. Okay, well, good because I sure as hell can. Um, number six, BYU. So rude. I mean, just how rude. I pay all the bills around here, and then this thing going to come in here. And All right. BYU does what they were supposed to do this week. They went all the way across the country to Central Florida, took care of business. There's, there's very little to grab onto with BYU that you don't like, right? I mean, they're, they're just pretty well-rounded, and – they got out to an early lead against UCF. That's exactly what you got to do to UCF, by the way. If you can get out against an early lead against that team, they're not going to run their way back to victory. Um, now, they have come back in one game this year, but that that it wasn't BYU, I can promise you. Um, BYU looks to be the strongest group in the Big 12 to me right this second, um, the one with the least amount of flaws anyway. What do you think about 6 through 10? Yeah, I think starting with uh, BYU at six, you know, this is a team, like I said last night, they just play really good complementary football. The, they're a defensive-led group. The offense does well to extend drives and give the defense a break and, and really lean on uh, the defense. They play special teams well. They play field position well. Um, pretty well-rounded, pretty well-coached team, I think, uh, all in all. I'd like to see a little bit more out of the offense. Um, I'd like to see the BYG uh, get going a little bit more, but, uh, but no, nonetheless, I mean, Retzlaff has, has, has had a really good, really good season so far, um, for what he is asked to do. 
Uh, but BYU, very solid there in the Big 12. They look like the front runner. Um, Clemson was on a bye this week, but we've seen uh, Kate Glubnick really surge since the Georgia game in week one. And uh, re- he's really placed himself in a, a Heisman contention sort of uh, race here. Um, th- this is a guy who, who I-, I would not be surprised at this point to, to see him uh, in New York at the end of the season. Um, and, and that's that's not something that I thought I would be saying because I was not a huge Klubnik fan uh, going into the season. Um, and it, it seems like he's sort of righted the course there uh, under Garrett Riley. Uh, really, really got the system down there. Um, and, and and I think that their defense is still really good. They've given up some you know more points than they have in years past. But ultimately, I think this defense is solid enough to win the ACC potentially if they can get over the hump. Uh, against Miami and also against Louisville, which is uh, a game that we'll talk about on Tuesday, like you said. Um, the Cyclones at number eight just really want to see what they do against some better opponents. At, at this point, they have not really seen the um, – they, they, they haven't had the games yet to really be tested, uh, but those will come towards the end of the year. Uh, but definitely look like a team that can uh, potentially win the Big 12 – just probably probably going to need to win out at, at this point um, with you know with the way BYU's playing with the way Colorado is sort of surging. Um, anxious to see what they do moving forward, but uh, at this point, I mean, you, you got to tip your cap to what they've done so far this season. Um, and then Ohio State, like you said, not a great outing against Nebraska. Um, you know, this was a this was a team that that went out and make no doubts about it. They, they just went out and, and bought a ton of players. Uh, and so far it, they really don't have a ton to show for it. No big wins yet. Um, you know, that's not really their fault for, for having an easy first half of their schedule, but as they get into the bulk of their schedule, they got Penn state coming up this week, Indiana down the road, which looks like a, a really good game potentially. Um, We'll we'll see what Ohio State is made of moving forward. Um, but not a good outing for them offensively. Couldn't run the ball against Nebraska, which I mean they they do have a good running defense. But when you're Ohio State, you you expect to get a push up front, and they did not do so this week. Uh, pretty lackluster performance by them. Uh, and then Texas A&M, huge win, best win of the season by far for the Aggies, and um, they're they're looking to build on that momentum. And, and uh, as they gear up for, for South Carolina, which is uh, a closer game by Vegas' odds than you might imagine, uh, we'll be breaking that one down here in just a minute. But uh, but I agree with 6 through 10 at this point. Well, then I think you'll certainly agree with 1 through 5. 1 through 10 was what I felt the most confident about as far as putting this top 25 together. The, the, the ones under that, I feel like you could move them around a bit. But... Uh, let me know in the comment section. I'd love to argue with you about it because I looked at this every which way today, and, and it took me way too long to write this list out. But And I went through, I don't know, seven sheets of paper doing it. I, I wrote it. Nope, don't like it. Got to redo it. Wrote it. Got to redo it. I mean, just over and over. Number one, we got Oregon. No surprises there, okay? Oregon has been number one on our top 25 since they beat Ohio State at home. Never had Texas at number one on this show because they never deserved to be. And lo and behold, look what we're starting to see now. Oregon is the number one team. There's no doubt about that. They got the best win. They got no losses. It's it's pretty basic. Georgia at number two. Georgia has got arguably the best win. Maybe the second or third best win, however you want to put it, however you want to frame it. Georgia's got one of the best wins. They went on the road and beat the reigning number one team at that point, right? But And Georgia has a loss, and it's to Alabama, who's in the top 25 here. So if Georgia – I'd love to see Georgia and Alabama play again. I don't know if we're going to get the pleasure of seeing that this year. Alabama's got Georgia's number for whatever reason, and that is Georgia's one loss. And, and if that's the only loss Georgia's got or any team's got, that's a pretty decent one, I guess. Um, and it was on the road at Alabama as well. So, you know, we're at that point where we're justifying – who's got the best loss here and who's got the best wins. And Georgia has one of each. Um, Penn State at number three. Do I think that Penn State's the third best team in the country? 
you, that you might ask? Uh, no, I don't. I don't actually think that Penn State's the third best team in the country, but do they deserve to be ranked number three in this ranking? Absolutely, they do. Absolutely, they do. They've got top 25 wins. They have, first of all, beat everybody that they played. Um, we've got a big matchup coming up. They're going to be hosting Ohio State this week. That's going to be a Tuesday talk there. That's not going to be tonight. That's a big game. We'll have all the graphics set up, all the stats, all the deep dive stuff that you're going to want to get ready to bet on that game or watch that game on Saturday. So come and join us Tuesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern for our preview and prediction show uh, and the show in which we do all of our big game breakdowns. Number four, you've got Miami. Miami is a very exciting team to watch. I don't think the defense is as good as we thought. But then again, Miami is in that ACC bubble in which they have not played a very tough schedule. I mean, they they played. It's not Miami's fault that Florida is so far gone. It's not even funny, you know, and, and that's who Miami started off the year playing, right? They, they scheduled that game years in advance thinking, I mean, how are you supposed to, I guess, necessarily predict that Florida is going to be bad other than the fact that they've been bad for a few years in a row. Miami went out there, whooped their hiney, uh, and they've done that for the most part. Uh, offensively, they're really, really good. Always score a bunch of points. Um, if the defense can get things figured out and show up game in and game out and be more consistent, Miami could be your, you know, one of the, they're already top four, but they could be one of the top two teams in the country. Um, but their, their defense just hasn't showed us that. And they like to play from behind. We've seen Miami play from behind a lot this season. Um, but they were able to take care of Florida State, no problem. Um, one of the worst Power Four programs in college football at this point. Um, but we've got Miami at number four. They're hanging around number four, and I don't really see them going anywhere until we can get them a formidable opponent uh, that is able to, you know, go, go pound for pound with them. Number five, Indiana. This team we've been paying attention to for weeks in a row now. Uh, Newsflash, uh, th they're really good. Don't know when Curtis Rourke is coming back. The quarterback um, didn't stop Indiana this past weekend from going ahead and covering the spread and doing what they needed to do. Um, and that's a trend this year, guys. Indiana has yet to trail in a football game. They've yet to defeat an opponent by less than uh, 10 points this season. Um, and, and most of those have been multiple touchdowns they've beat these opponents by. So was it, is it the hardest schedule in the world? No. Um, there's some big games coming up. But all you can do on a schedule like that is just beat the crap out of everybody, and that's exactly what Indiana's done. So what do you think about the top five? There's not really a whole lot of changes here except for the fact that I went ahead and put old Indiana on up there because we were a little hesitant. We knew Indiana was pretty good. We were a little hesitant to think that they were maybe like for real like top ten, top five good. I'm not really hesitant about that anymore. I, I think that Indiana has got a chance to really actually do something this season against the big boys in the Big Ten. Um, they're they're going to get their shot here at the end of the season. And I can't wait. I, I hope Curtis Rourke is healthy and ready to go for it. Yeah, I mean, it seems like he's going to be ready next week, potentially, um, I, or this week, I should say, uh, going up against Michigan State. That It would be a perfect time for him to come back. But even with the backup coming in, it didn't seem like there was much of a drop-off, if any, at all. Uh, once again, Indiana jumps out to a lead and wins by double digits. It was a, a pretty pretty dominant win in, a, in a, um, a game that some figured to be a trap game coming off of the big win against Nebraska, you know, Indiana, you, you, you might've thought would have the mindset coming in that they have arrived. Uh, but Kurt Signetti has, has proven time and time again, that uh, he can get his team up for these games and uh, he, he knows how to motivate his players. And uh, that's, that's a really, um, that, that, that's a really important aspect of being a coach he does it at a phenomenal level. Um, and really when you look at Indiana and their personnel and players, they are very, ex they are a very experienced team, uh, with a lot of age, a lot of, um, a lot of football knowledge on that team. And, and they're proven that, that they can do this, uh, in year one under the, uh, under Kurt Signetti really like what Indiana's doing. We'll talk more about their matchup coming up. Uh, here a little bit later on in the show against Michigan State. Uh, that figures to be a, a pretty good pretty good defense that they'll be going up against um, and could be, could be a, a really interesting matchup to watch. Miami at four. Look, Miami, they've already been through 
the toughest parts of their schedule. They've got Duke, Georgia Tech, Wake Forest, and Syracuse uh, left on their schedule. I I know that they'll be favored in all of those matchups. Um, I don't see a hiccup out of those four games, really. I mean, I, I just would it really would it surprise me if they drop one of those? Not necessarily, but I I don't I, I don't see them losing. Uh, for for the remainder of the year, um, and then you know no Clemson in the regular season. Hopefully we get to see them uh, play one another in the ACC championship. I think that those two teams have been the um, the you know the cream of the crop in the ACC, so to speak, uh, all season long. So very very much looking forward to that matchup. If these two teams can continue to take care of business uh, for the remainder of the of the year, uh, Penn State. Another pretty impressive win, I would say, uh, against Wisconsin. Drew Aller goes out with a knee injury um, or maybe an ankle injury, uh, a leg injury, we'll say. Uh, not sure what his status is, but I didn't see much of a drop-off when Prebula came in. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about, uh, hopefully, the injury status of, of Aller. Hopefully, we'll know more by Tuesday coming into the big matchup against Ohio State. But Penn State's still a defensive-led football team. And, um at the end of the day, that's that's been winning them football games at this point, and uh, and they just continue to win. So um, don't really mind them being in the top five or at number three. Uh, big matchup this weekend. Let's see if they can get it done. Georgia at two. They were on a bye this week. Um, they didn't move anywhere, rightfully so. Had the biggest win of the season. I think looking at Georgia right now, and uh, and also, you know, just as a – Precursor to our breakdown on Tuesday, Georgia and Florida, um, really both of those teams were, were kind of having to recalibrate what they are because they're, they've got different pieces now. Uh, Georgia's getting healthier on the defensive side of the football. Um, and, and, and Florida, you know, they're, they got a new quarterback because of an injury to Graham Mertz. And, and he seems to be igniting um, that offense, DJ Lagway, that is. So um, interested to break down that matchup with you on Tuesday. But um, I, I like Georgia where they're at right now. If they can continue to play on the defensive side of the football like they did uh, against Texas, then they're going to be a tough team to beat. But I also have said all season long that Georgia's offense is very average. Very average. Not a, not a ton of playmakers on that side of the football. Um, how do they progress moving forward? I do think that if, if they want to win a national championship, they're going to have to play much better on the offensive side of the football. Uh, and then Oregon looks like the most complete team in the country. I mean, they um, absolutely handled business this week against Illinois. They put on an absolute clinic against Illinois. Um, not I don't, I don't know that I can look at a more complete football game Um you know, and point to a more complete football game. Maybe Indiana against Nebraska, I guess I would say, w would be, um, you know, one example of a more complete football game. But nonetheless, Oregon absolutely took care of business this week against Illinois and um, and just looks like the, the best team in the country with the best players in the country. Um, they're going to be very tough to beat down the stretch. <laughs>